shifting gears a little bit, um, Libra, and I know it's just still a white paper, and we know a little bit more from Mark's testimony uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what's your view on Libra, and both just as we now as an, an academician, but also earlier, let's assume this proposal was to come to you as a, as a uh, RBI governor, how would you look at it? How would you react to it? Well, I I the idea is for a fully backed um, uh, coin, right? So you put in uh, a dollar into Libra, and it stays as a dollar somewhere, and in, in, in turn, I'm issued a Libra, uh, uh, or whatever fraction of a Libra that I have. Um, what this can uh, do uh, is, if it has a trustworthy organization behind it, which is also well regulated, because central banks will want to regulate it now that there is a fixed uh, backing. They want to know that the backing is actually there. Uh, what it can do is uh, certainly facilitate within border and cross border payments uh, very easily. Um, the from the central bank's perspective, uh, uh, reserve country central bank's perspective, uh, the worry will be one: is the reserve being maintained? Uh, where is it being maintained? Who has access to it? And can it disappear overnight or will it be there all the time? So that's, that's the standard safety and soundness uh, concern because you don't want to run on the Libra without backing. If it's fully backed, then it's okay. Uh, uh, and that's why you want to ensure that the backing is, is absolutely there. But the other concern is if this becomes a big source of payments, uh, what's being done with the information? Uh, is there a monopoly sort of uh, um, acquisition of payment information and how does that affect the rest of the financial system but also is this monopolization a good thing? So uh, one of the things uh, I think not just bank regulators but, uh, but government regulators would want to know is uh, first, is the information being uh, sort of kept safe and sound? What are the privacy issues? But second, uh, who has access to it and who can act upon it? And if it is a monopoly, how do we prevent that from being uh, an extortionary monopoly? On the uh, side of non-reserve currencies, there is a very, very big fear that something like Libra could displace the domestic currency and could be a form of dollarization, right? that already the dollar, there are a number of Latin American com uh, economies which don't have their own currency. Uh, Zimbabwe doesn't have its, uh, an effective currency, but, but even uh, countries that don't have that level of hyperinflation don't have their own currency because they've been displaced by the dollar. Could the Libra displace it? So there will be a number of countries which may actually say, well, I really worry about this. And uh, because it's trusted, that's the problem, it's trusted more than my own currency. And I don't want people to transact in this outside money um, because my fiat money and all the benefits that come from it, including my ability to erode it, the, the inflation tax that I can impose on people goes away. So my suspicion is that um, uh, the regulators across the world will have concerns about one, safety and soundness, and I think the kind of uh, sort of experience with Facebook so far means that it has to actually go up two levels in order to assure people that that safety and soundness will be maintained. But also the issue of information and uh, privacy as well as who has access to that information and is it a monopoly access. Uh, those will be issues that central bankers uh, in reserve currencies will worry about. Central bankers in uh, smaller countries, developing countries, would worry a lot about whether their own currency will get displaced, and there may be uh, attempts to restrict the use of this currency. Interesting. Um, what I want to do is, I know we still have time at hand. Pause here. I have a couple of questions, but what I want to do is actually open the floor for us to take some questions for the audience, and uh, then I can come to some of the summary questions that we wanted to ask you. So if we could bring the light up a little bit um, in the hall, and I know that there are people on both the sides who have uh, Wi-Fi mics. So if anybody would want to ask a question, if you could raise your hand, and when you do ask a question, if you could just identify yourself and then ask, then that'll be great. 
So, any questions? I can see some hands going up. Uh, Dr. Rajan, my name is Shankar. Uh, first of all, a big fan of yours from your time as, as governor. Um, you, my question really goes back to the Libra conversation. Uh, I'm intrigued by uh, what you mean by regulatory, uh, the regulatory aspect of it. Given that Libra is, let's say for a second, US uh, under the US jurisdiction, it's obviously going through a lot more scrutiny. Do you see someone like an Alipay or someone else, maybe from a different jurisdiction, being able to get uh, a similar thought across and become a global currency or coin or whatever you want to call it, which will facilitate, I believe, payments and other things that you mentioned in your Paytm example. I mean, I see this as a Paytm moment for the globe if uh, we are able to ever get that going. What's your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I, 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 it is a little different from the uh, decentralized solutions in that it is promising that the value will be there, right? And as a result, what you want to know is if somebody in uh, uh, Timbuktu has put money into Libra, that in fact, that there is a corresponding uh, amount of value sort of uh, somewhere, uh, which uh, somebody from Timbuktu can get access to when they want to get out. So this requires every regulator to feel happy that in fact their citizens are protected. And regulators always worry about worst case scenarios. What happens if there's a run on Libra, okay? So if all the money, all the reserves are in Geneva, uh, in, in Switzerland, well, that's very good for any Swiss uh, person who see, appears to be transacting. But what happens to that guy in Timbuktu? How does he get access to that value if in fact it's sequestered to help people there? Now, you say, well, there's, there's a dollar for everyone, so this is not an issue. Well, the regulator needs to know that it is there for everyone and where it is, right? So those are the kinds of concerns that emerge. Now, uh, you talked about an alternative currency. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, so long as it can inspire trust, uh, it is quite possible that private currencies emerge. Again, I would say the big threat is regulation. And it will come from entities who feel their own monopoly over fiat currency is being questioned uh, or is being, uh, there is competition for that. And so it is easy to imagine some jurisdictions that given that they, uh, the central bank and the government will lose out in this competition, given the private currency is so much more reliable, uh, they may effectively say, no, you can't use it here. Who has the mic? Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, my name is Bradley Kimes from Investment Perspectives and Cryptonair's documentary. I wanted to ask a question about globalization. If you could talk about the idea of the old concept of the banker coin and a neutral asset being in place of a global reserve status of the dollar and possibly that being XRP. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, what you're asking for is whether there's a possibility of a global currency. And to some extent, that's what Libra was trying to do. And as I understand it, that's different from what X XRP is trying to do. And, and, and the reason is, is as follows. As soon as you go to maintaining the value, right, some kind of stable coin, uh, a whole set of regulatory concerns get triggered. I have to make sure that there is corresponding uh, financial or real assets backing this this notional value that is that they seek to maintain that looks a lot more like a bank right because uh, you're promising some some claims which are fixed and uh, uh, that requires regulation for reasons I just talked about now once you get an army of regulators every central bank looking at it then the question is, have you added a whole set of transaction costs to this? And is it worth, uh, uh, is it that, that useful? As I understand it, what, uh, what is attempted with XRP is not so much maintaining the value, but offering a vehicle for exchange. 
which is quite different because there you can have value fluctuating. All you need is value to be stable for 10 seconds while the uh, whole transaction takes place. And as a result, uh, there's a whole different need for regulation. You don't need to regulate value. I don't care. So long as there is some value, the transaction can certainly take place. And as a regulator, I'm not so worried about either this displacing my fiat currency because you're moving from one fiat currency to another. It's just an interim value. And it's, it's a means of exchange, but it's neither a store of uh, value nor a unit of account, etc., etc. Thank you very much. <laughs> I must have said something right. <laughs>